Hi, my name is Giuseppe Cugliano. I'm the CEO and Creative Director of Playmagic. Playmagic is a game studio uh, with a focus on console and PC games development with a team of 45 people in Malta and uh, a new office in Kiev where we started with a tiny team that we come to grow in the coming months uh, thanks to a new partnership for an announced title with a well-recognized European partner. Um, the team in Malta is made of about 14-15 different nationalities, all coming from different professional experiences, with many of them also coming straight out from schools and academies with which we created close collaboration in selecting their best talent that joins the team moving from an internship up to various stages of professional qualifications. Um, in fact, we have been uh, often uh, promoting uh, uh, these people, um, the most capable and dedicated young developers up to group leads uh, very recently and it was very interesting to see their know-how growing so fast thanks to being properly mentored, assisted and supported by our management and team leads uh, as well as their personal and professional attitude within the range of soft skill that probably didn't know themselves uh, to have till they had the chance to be challenged by the daily tasks and trusted by their colleagues. Like any other creative industry, of course, talent is the most important aspect for Playmagic to find, hire, support and accelerate in order to create great games and ship them successfully worldwide and uh, on a night number of different devices um, such PlayStation, Xbox, uh, Nintendo, PC and the new um, cloud-based streaming platforms. What we do in Playmagic is uh, creating an improving balance uh, between experienced uh, seniors and fresh young talents where two different kind of energy um, joins together with the management, injecting the knowledge uh, to the passion and the drive uh, of the young creatives. Malta was and is of course uh, a very effective tool uh, that allows us to wide the spectrum of uh, our talent scout activity thanks to the fact um, it's an English spoken country which makes things much easier when it comes to bring people from uh, different uh, nationalities, different countries and help them settling in the country as fast as we can. Of course, the island uh, provides a very high quality of life uh, for various reasons. We have a very long summers, uh, 300 days uh, of sun a year, an international and safe environment, and uh, because of the island sites, uh, uh, reduce commuting time. That is, of course, very important. Uh, as it gives everyone more free time every day, every week, and in one year you can probably gain several weeks of a free time, uh, which is not bad at all. Uh, Work-life balance is very important and uh, it's becoming more and more central uh, to the daily discussions of employers and governments. Uh, we like to say that we want the job to fit into our people life and not vice versa. Uh, happy people makes uh, great games and this is a fact that have been fully demonstrated with more and more company uh, uh, trying to adopt the close to zero crunch time approach. And this is a very important goal that everyone needs to achieve, but it's still difficult because of uh, the challenges uh, that game development uh, offers uh, to all of us, as the complexity of uh, modern video games tend to increase uh, year after year especially with the new platforms and the next generation of console and, and machines. As these games requires more people to work on them, uh, Playmagic is uh, projected to become at least a hundred plus studio across the two locations that we have uh, to be able to work on bigger games uh, within the double A segment and uh, eventually the triple A in the future if uh, we will be able to break the 200 people mark in the coming years. Of course, uh, the bigger a company grow, uh, the more the complexity and the challenge uh, keeps you awake at night. As the team dynamics uh, changes internally and the rules and the pipelines uh, that you created uh, becomes uh, obsolete very, very fast and uh, you need to adapt and create new ones. 
to support and facilitate the work and the life of every single team member. Thank you very much for this opportunity and uh, please keep an eye on Play Magic and uh, of course uh, the Malta game development scene. Thank you very much. My name is Toti Bach and I'm the founder of a development studio here in Malta. Uh, we are called uh, New Alternate Reality Constructions or NARC and uh, as the name implies uh, we are making a persistent online world, uh, an MMO, uh, but in our case uh, we don't view our work so much uh, as uh, game design or creating entertainment as uh, we do being in the forefront uh, of uh, the development uh, and uh, adv advancement of uh, communication technology, which we are. Uh, and in fact, in many ways, uh, taking part uh, in the rapid uh, development of human civilization. And, and human society and uh, we say this without any hyperbole and uh, we take our role seriously uh, before we decided to set up shop in Malta we did quite uh, an extensive diligence uh, and comparison between countries there is uh, there are a lot of options of course uh, to uh, companies uh, in our sector which is a growing and blooming sector and many incentives uh, and, and places uh, that are, are uh, trying to attract uh, companies uh, of, of our kind. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, we settled on, on Malta for a number of reasons. And after two and a half years of operations, I can say with, with confidence that, that uh, uh, we don't regret that move. One of the deciding factors in our case for setting up shop in Malta was, uh, without a doubt, uh, the support from the, di uh, from the business development environment and, uh, uh, and the institutions uh, like uh, Malta Gaming and Malta Enterprise and also the Ministry of Economy and, and, and the Secretary for Digital Economy, which uh, amazed us that there was uh, a junior minister with, uh, with that title and that's in many ways uh, indicative of the reception that we got. We were concerned about uh, uh, in, in any entanglement with uh, government or government uh, bodies was uh, uh, paperwork and red tape uh, but our experiences in Malta has been quite the contrary. Uh, we started off uh, with uh, uh, Malta Enterprise, uh, 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 through their consultation, we identified that applying for a startup business loan would be more uh, uh, appropriate in our case, an easier path than uh, a, a startup grant. And once uh, we had uh, identified the best program that was the best fit for us, uh, the execution was relatively straightforward. And in the beginning months uh, and year, we uh, received uh, a lot of support uh, at a time when we really needed it and now that we're moving past uh, our seed uh, stage uh, we continue to uh, receive support and uh, advice and uh, a lot of moral support uh, when we opened our uh, headquarters now in, in, in February 2020 uh, our inauguration party was, uh, uh, was attended by the heads of, of Malta Gaming and Enterprise and Ministers and, and, and the Minister for Economy himself uh, 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 and the Secretary for Digital Economy inaugurated our, our headquarters officially. And uh, uh, for a small startup like ours who's uh, 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 working at establishing itself in a cutting edge that's industry where uh, excellence is, is required, that's extremely important. And for anyone in our shoes, uh, uh, they will know that. The local business uh, ecosystem in Malta, uh, uh, in our sector, has also proven to be uh, much more uh, uh, fruitful than uh, we had anticipated. 
We've already started uh, two uh, separate projects, uh, uh, collaborations with uh, the university on an extremely diverse uh, set of subjects. One is uh, uh, dancing. Uh, uh, the technical term would be ludo choreology, the science of uh, dance uh, 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 choreography in game design. And the other is a collaboration on uh, uh, AI, artificial intelligence algorithm, in, in animation of, of uh, avatars uh, in our game. So, uh, 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 and that uh, uh, I think will prove to be a mutually beneficial relationship. We were also pleasantly surprised by uh, the local uh, talent pool when it comes to hiring skilled staff. We had strongly anticipated that 80% of our original hirings would be from abroad, uh, but in fact, after our uh, senior uh, uh, positions, C-level positions had been filled, uh, uh, our hiring started to be more and more uh, domestic. And in fact, four out of the last five hires have been uh, homegrown. And on the horizon, it looks like uh, uh, a similar ratio, at least uh, uh, for time being. Attracting uh, skilled uh, workforce from abroad uh, uh, to relocate in Malta has also proven to be a breeze. Uh, uh, we have prepared ourselves uh, for a potential challenge, but uh, so far it hasn't materialized. A typical obstacle in, in such a situation would be objections uh, uh, from a, uh, a spouse, for instance. In our case, after every a scouting mission, uh, a spouse uh, has, uh, uh, without exception, become one of our strongest uh, advocates and, and allies in the headhunting mission. So that's our experience so far. Um, uh, and uh, uh, also as far as just the companies uh, uh, in, uh, in the field goes, it's a small community, it's extremely diverse, Everyone's ambitious, of course, and, and, and wants to show the other one that they know what they're doing. But at the same time, it's very collaborative, friendly, open and, and welcoming. And uh, all places uh, have their pluses and minuses. There are uh, incredible pluses belonging to a small uh, uh, system uh, like we have in Malta. And of course, there are certain drawbacks uh, specific to that. All in all, we're not even in doubt that uh, that uh, benefits outweigh any potential minus or, or, or drawbacks. So, at the end of the day, all in all, what can I say? Well, maybe I can uh, put it this way. Uh, we at NARC, we love it in Malta, and uh, we're here to stay. And uh, please come join the party. My name is Jonas Enron, I'm CEO of Karmafi. Our project aims to bring together the world of games and the world of doing good, or philanthropy. We do this by building a platform that lets players choose to support good causes as they play a game. And we help motivate that through an extensive gamification system, and we work hand in hand with a developer to build a custom system that lets them drive user engagement and other key metrics. The results to date have been exceptionally good. We're very, very proud of how our system's working. It's easy to integrate, it's easy to use, uh, player feedback has been very positive, and we've done a number of, of support elements for several good causes. And that's especially important now with everything that's going on in the world. At Comify, we obviously believe that games can have a strong social impact, especially in light of, of all the help and support that good causes need at the moment through these difficult times. But much wider afield, we set out to prove, or well, almost five years ago now, that, that players would choose to engage more if they knew that their actions could have a positive outcome. 
And through our platform, that's exactly what we provide. A chance for players, for free, to engage with and support causes that they personally care about. As we wanted to prove back back in the early days, that yes, people will make choose to make a difference, and they do. And we also wanted to empower everybody to become a philanthropist. So, almost ju- a little bit jokingly, we're looking for seven billion philanthropists out there if everybody can be a gamer. But through our platform, that's exactly what we can, what we can help provide together with a game developer. Video games can connect, educate, and empower in a number of different ways. On a social level, especially in the times as they are, games have been an invaluable resource for people to stay connected. And that's been true before this COVID situation and will certainly be true afterwards. It's also a way to have shared experiences and that allows you to connect to people, which is very, very helpful. And there are lots of different game genres, serious games, for example, that can empower you, train you, teach you, uh, even casual games. Nurturing talent in this sector <clears throat> is incredibly important. And it is something that we, as a team uh, based down here in Malta, in the Mediterranean, we try to help and support. But to do that, there needs to be good education, there needs to be a culture that values creativity as well as technical achievement. Um, There needs to be a good, solid career path for people to choose to get involved in video games. And I myself have come up from a modding background, so a non-traditional route um, in terms of educational background, but a very traditional route in, in terms of just how things were done way back when I got started. But we're now in a very good position to empower a new generation to come in and participate in this wonderful industry of ours. And we, to do that, we need to have the right educational elements in place. We need to value this type of contribution to society. And there have to be solid career options and a background of, of solidity so that it's not sort of working from your basement or garage as you know we once did but that it's a it's a career your uh, your mother can, can be proud of Welcome and welcome to the Games for Change Festival. We're so thrilled and delighted to be able to contribute uh, to such a great lineup also within the agenda. My name is Van Filetti and uh, I run uh, the Gaming Malta Foundation. We're a non-profit foundation set up to promote Malta as a gaming jurisdiction. And today we've got a great lineup of speakers you know, from the industry in talking about games and how games can have an impact, a uh, social impact how games can help to change also ideas and ways of working. I will be delving into these subjects today with starting off from the Institute of Digital Games in Malta within the University of Malta. The first thought leadership and you know to hear his ideas and also the plans what's happening within the Institute of Digital Games. Our first guest and our first friend I would say is Jesper from the Institute of Digital Games and we've shared some interesting insights and also his ideas about games and how also these can be used, you know, games for social impact and tangibly what's being done at the Institute of Digital Games. The Institute of Digital Games is a postgraduate um, institution where it's based on research and education. Uh, We do research into game design, game technology and game analysis. What that means in essence is we do research in artificial intelligence, procedural content generation, um, as well as actual design and the impact of design decisions and analysis, which is more of a sort of literary 
in similar way as you would uh, it's a similar way as analyzing film or literature but then to relate it to games so our masters is a very academic masters it's a masters at the university and as well a phd that we we offer uh, that being said it's still digital games so there's a big component of design in the courses uh, we often have people that come from industry after having a few years of industry that come into the masters and the general feedback that we've had from them is that they've loved it because they really get a theoretical framework for the things that they've been doing and w which they've been learning uh, the hard way uh, uh, in many cases um, that said most of our students generally come from an sort of from an education from a from a bachelor's level into uh, into our masters and they come from a wide range of, of backgrounds we don't try to limit the the background that they can come from um, one because you can apply anything um, to game game design in a way in fact one of our students that now works or now worked with CD Projekt Red and he came from a podiatry background so it, it doesn't need to be limiting obviously we do ask for a portfolio and a letter of motivation which shows them like this is truly a person that has interest as well in game design so we're ranked in the top 25 graduate schools by the Princeton Review uh, the Princeton Review is a US based institution that does this sort of ranking to help students choose uh, a college or a university. Um, in in our case, we're ranked 16th this year. We started from 22, I think it was in 2016 or 17, and now we're at 16. So we've been constantly improving the service, um, of the education that we're providing to our students. Um, and in addition to that, we're also ranked in a different list in the top 10, actually number eight and that is for the technical research uh, output so we're one of the most prolific uh, game researchers um, in the world uh, just two places i think beneath google so we're competing with very big institutions and we're only a small institution here obviously this is a big interest area of interest to us because a lot of times the bias people come into thinking about games is their mindless entertainment uh, they are just wastes of time uh, you often hear parents say like you know my kid is playing games it's a waste of time there are obviously other games that do provide some sort of added value uh, there's such a wide there's a huge variety of, of games of types of games so it's very difficult to say like this one is a waste of time or this one is, is not and beyond that the amount of skill it takes to make a game as well the amount of things you need to learn to make a game also provides a huge amount of learning material to kids and even adults um, but back <laughs> to games that can make uh, a social impact that's one of the things that our researchers are really focused on um, particularly since we have the technology side and the more humanities oriented research the more humanities oriented research does a lot of research in that and as well actually the technology side because you can use for example artificial intelligence to tailor learning um, you can use uh, for example you can use games to teach artificial intelligence in fact we have a project now with the EU, an Erasmus project, LearnML, which is based uh, in Malta. And we are going through schools and we're developing a prototype for showing children um, from pre-college age how to learn artificial intelligence through games. The first thing we've actually done, and it might be interesting for people, is that we have a compiled a document of a number of games that teach coding and artificial intelligence that teachers and educators and students could use. Um, then on the side of games from a more humanities oriented side, philosoph philosophical side, uh, Professor Gualeni, he does a lot of work on using virtual worlds to 
um, show how you can think, change your thinking. For example, he makes what he calls interactive thought experiments. So when you use a thought experiment in philosophy, right, you're imagining it. But in this case, since you can use a virtual world, you can actually make people interact with the thought experiment. One of the things you've seen throughout the pandemic is, for example, the release of um, Animal Crossing. It's a, a, switch, a switch game, and it's a very socially interactive switch game. And I think when people have been prevented from interacting socially in different ways, the games have provided a great outlet to stimulate this sort of pseudo interpersonal interactions. But beyond facilitating social aspects, um, which some games do, um, it, it also, you've seen when the, when the pandemic struck that the game sales went, went up because obviously people were spending more time at home, spending less money on external activities. So I think it is also a, a sort of a relief a new uh, something people turned to when they wanted some sort of relief from the from the stress that was quite prevalent uh, throughout so I think even if they are mindless entertainment uh, they provide a certain amount of stress relief that and then that would be helpful like I said our students come from a really different group uh, they're very varied and I think what is interesting to see is as they progress throughout the masters, they start to see the potential of their decisions in the game. So they they see a clearer link with their game design decisions and how that affects the thought process. Um, and this is actually one of the research areas of Stefano. Um, and there's two aspects to that. Um, there's the player interaction aspect in the sense that you make a decision and the player acts in a certain way. So they become more aware of that link, the impact that the decisions have. And additionally, they are more aware of how their decisions affect their own thought process. So if they are making a decision for the player, to act in a certain way, either for social change. They're also thinking more about this type of social change and decision making themselves. If students are in the moment of choosing what university to study to, definitely what postgraduate program to study to, because that is <laughs> my area. So I would say that Malta is, and the Institute of Digital Games are a good choice for a number of reasons. We are a small institute, so the amount of personal attention you will get is um, insane. <laughs> uh, in fact, we've had students say sometimes we get feedback that is longer than the assignment that we submitted. Uh, there's a dynamic community, a growing community. The government is really supporting this video game industry, so people are embracing it. So when you're here, you feel that there's uh, something happening, you're part of a potential movement, you're part of that electric growth. Um, on top of that, there are a number of studios here working on a number of really interesting projects. When you're at the Institute, it's also a research institute working closely with uh, industry, always pushing new things, trying to find new perspectives. So. I think those are very good reasons to, to come to Malta, apart from the fact that we're ranked in the top. But rankings are nice, but what is really important is what you get when you come for the education. And I think that's something unique that we can get here in Malta. And thank you, Jesper, for sharing your ideas there. Next today is Professor Stefano Gualene, uh, also within the Institute of Digital Games. And uh, Stefano has been working on some great projects here and we'll be sharing and he'll be sharing the ideas on that about also Malta and the real estate challenge that there is here and how they're also doing research towards games with social impact and how to leverage all this. Let's hear what Professor Stefano has to say about this. 
Well, I have a background in philosophy, and so I'm trying to, in a way, combine two worlds, that of my experience in the industry and my academic face in philosophy, and try to use games as a means to communicate uh, ideas, debunk ideas, um, convince people of things, or even debate. So how can we use, for example, virtual interaction, playful or not, to explain ideas, to debunk ideas, to change minds. Virtual worlds and games are not neutral technologies in a sense that they're not tools in our hands that we can just enjoy and distract ourselves with, but they come carrying ideologies and positions even if those are not declared. So very often game ask us to, games ask us to uh, collect resources, optimize behaviors, uh, be better than others, which are values that, as you can understand, are at the very basis of a capitalistic, liberal sort of mindset. And we're asked as players to accept them. So one of the key ways, perhaps, in which games can help us um, do social good is push us in a direction which is perhaps more open towards social ideas and towards communities rather than towards the individualism that has been driving most of the game-based interactions. What I'm trying to say here is that we need to recognize these kind of technologies as bringing ideologies to the public. And once we realize that, we can also perhaps leverage those ideologies to say perhaps better and more positive things than collect or you can be better than others and just think of yourself and your results. Um, we're not trying to teach particular notions or we're not trying to train particular skills, but we're in a way putting forward a kind of experience that might let you assess an alternative, let you consider another possibility, let you consider another possibility of behaving or being. So it's in a way like it's a second phase to accepting games for change as having like a very direct and powerful um, impact on society and it's considering games, any kinds of games, as bringing messages and realizing that and be, being able to leverage that will be a key aspect of the future of this community, I suppose. We're working in that in academia, so most of what we do is written and theoretical work, but we also did some games in the past. One of the most recent uh, games that we developed here at the Institute is a game that tries to get the players in a position to be real estate contractors in Malta. And from the way they build, we can gather that the interest for, say, safety, nature, or architectural consistency. But what we try to do is to bring up this sore and perhaps uncomfortable uh, message in a satirical way. We try to poke fun of the absolutely obvious way in which uh, real estate here functions uh, in function of money and profit. So in a way, like it's a critical game which uses satire to cast light on this um, phenomenon. And we've been recently interviewed in, by both Japanese and local uh, newspapers about this particular use of games to uh, give rise or put the highlight on a social issue. There's a potential in games and we should realize not only their capability for transferring notion and training but also for sending ideological messages and having a political role, then being able to handle and to understand those dimensions of the culture that we consume on a daily basis is very important. So they could come here and we are a number of different we are a number of different people with a number of different perspectives. We have literary theory, philosophy, AI, uh, procedural content generation, and each and every one of us tries to uncover and um, get them to become capable of thinking a particular way about this cultural product or cultural expression, which is games. So I think that if all of this is true and games matter to culture more than uh, just as a business, uh, then coming here would enable them to think that way and then either go back to the industry as better, more aware developers, or to continue in games research or in philosophy like some of us do. Jan Nikari is, is, is based in the UK and he's helping us also within the Gaming Malta Foundation in channeling uh, our strategies uh, towards and developing a blueprint for video gaming growth here. And we normally have a lot of discussions with Dan about nurturing talent, nurturing talent in the med, and also, you know, about how we can also use the thought leadership and research within the Institute of Digital Games with Gaming Malta support in how to invest also more time and, and also training within, within games with a social impact. And, you know, and also Dan has shared these ideas with us. Games has the ability to make change, to connect us around the world, to provide opportunities to other industries 
It also has the ability to provide a career for the next generation that won't be working in car factories or, or coal mines. They'll be building a new economy and one that's more socially just and equal, providing opportunities for everyone. We believe that in Malta, we have the opportunity to bring these people together. And I look forward to seeing you in Malta. I hope you enjoyed this. There's a lot of things happening in Malta when it comes to video game and the and the video game esports system it's something you know which 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 as gaming malta we have a very clear north star that of being home of gaming excellence and we try and do that with mission zeal from looking at the educational aspects of video gaming and how to build the ecosystems and how to set up incubators and accelerators for young startups and young companies within um, you know the malta environment and the malta jurisdiction all this also with the great help from our friends at the financial at, at the at the parliamentary secretariat for financial services and the digital economy they've also recently launched a uh, digital think tank which which we're happy to contribute to on a continuous basis and you know and you know that shows a great sign where where you know actually government is listening also to the stakeholders and implementing also tangible solutions on ways